ABC News is out today with an interview with Fred Trump III, who's calling his uncle Donald Trump atomic crazy, says he used racial slurs decades ago. And of course, a Trump campaign spokesperson called the claims completely fabricated. But folks, this is just another dot on that line of Donald Trump's life. There's a lot of dots on that line. This is yet just another dot that allows you to connect the, the lifeline of who Donald Trump really is. And it's just amazing to me that despite the more we know about who Donald Trump really is, there are still some people who choose either not to believe it, which is by definition the way a cult of a personality cult or a cult of personality works. So in this story, folks, I've just highlighted some of the some of the pertinent details. Fred Trump the third said his uncle is atomic crazy, as I mentioned, that he witnessed him using racial slurs decades ago. And he says that this latest Trump family tell-all, this book that he's written, is not a political hit job, but rather the full-on truth about his uncle, who is the Republican nominee for president. So my feeling about what's really going on here is that here's a, here's a man who has a son that is severely disabled. And this man has chosen to be with his son no matter what. And... It seems to me like there's, there's been financial support from the family in this endeavor of supporting the severely disabled young man, Fred Trump's son. And for whatever reason, that money has dried up, which is boggling because, as you know, Donald Trump is the wealthiest man alive. Just ask. He'll tell you. So this man doesn't have that many options left. Here's a son who's severely disabled, and his money is is drying up to to furnish a a level of medical care, a, a certain level of quality of life for this son. The man is being backed into a corner. So this book is is a way for him to raise money to allow his son to get medical care. And I could launch into that whole diatribe about health care and why we need health care and why does Donald Trump resist health care. And yes, you know, we're still waiting on that health care plan from Donald Trump that's two weeks away, four years ago. But I mean, the, the stuff that uh, this man says about his uncle, it's it's really not anything that we didn't already know for those of you who know Donald Trump. Now, for those that are MAGA-oriented, They'll just turn their head and say, I don't believe this. You know, this is BS. And he goes on to say this about Donald Trump. He says, I was about 10 years old and I was at my grandparents' house like I was a lot, Fred Trump said. And Donald, I could hear him screaming. I went down to the driveway of my grandparents' house and there was his white El Dorado convertible with two slashes in the roof. Still remember it. And here's Donald, he says. He had electrical tape because the roof was black, and he was trying to use this black electrical tape, and he used the N-word twice, just saying who he thought probably had done this. He went on to say that, I don't believe he's a racist, Fred Trump added when pressed on the question. I just think that he uses people, whether they're black or they're whoever can help him, he will use them. And you know, call it racist or not, I don't believe in that. He uses them as props. And what he gets, what he needs out of them, votes, he'll cast them aside. So this is uh, some pretty powerful stuff here, folks. And at the top of this, we've got this interview. So I want to play this portion of it. So I have a listen to this. This is Fred Trump III. It's a lot. After his uncle was elected president, Fred Trump says he saw an opportunity to advocate for the disabled. I was in the Oval Office 12 times, about. And that was our mission, to advocate for people with complex disabilities. It culminated in May of 2020, 
in the Oval Office. Donald was there, and, and he was very gracious. Several other uh, folks were there, including the group that we brought down. We dispersed. I was asked to go back and see Donald. He greeted me with his familiar, hey, pal, how's it going? We sat down for a bit. And he just came out with these people, all the expenses, they should just die. Mm. He's talking about human beings who have complex issues. And the first thing he could say was, they should just die. Fred claims this wasn't isolated, describing a phone call to alert his uncle the medical fund set up by the family for his son William was running low, a fund he says the former president consistently replenished. A couple of years ago, I said, I called him. I said, Donald, the fund's running out. And without hesitation, he said, your son doesn't recognize you. Let him die and move to Florida. Good God. Move to Florida. Were you surprised? <laughs> It's a great question. I, my response was, no, Donald, he does recognize me, and said, oh, well, thanks, and, and, and hung up. Was I surprised? I, I don't think you could hear something like that and not be surprised, um, but that is what he has become. Um, it, it's sad. That's what he has become, folks. And you know, a society, and people are judged on how we treat, you know, the, the most disabled of our society. And if this is how Donald Trump is choosing to treat these people, it's absolutely disgusting. So Eric Trump came out this afternoon, just about an hour ago, and he said this on X. He said, it's disappointing that after decades of unwavering love, support, golf memberships, family vacations, and millions of dollars in support for his wonderful son, Fred Trump has decided to cash in less than 100 days before an election. I have signed the checks and witnessed firsthand as my father and our family has provided endless financial support so that Fred's son could receive the best possible medical care. To read this garbage and see that he has now followed his troubled sister simply earn a, to simply earn a quick buck is disgusting, disheartening, and a prime example of no good deed goes unpunished. So basically the money is is just dried up. Here's a family that's imminently wealthy, has more than they could ever want. They have the, the best homes. And he's talking about unwavering love in terms of golf memberships, family vacations, and millions of dollars in support for his wonderful son. Well, he's not that wonderful, right? Because you're not supporting him anymore. And And what is he talking about here golf memberships how does how does that help a disabled son I, I don't quite get that i mean what what can he do with a golf membership i mean this guy is running out of money for support for medical support and he's talking about golf memberships and folks it's it it, it is disgusting and you know to them the, the fact that this Fred Trump III is being cornered, he is in he, a corner. He has no more, more money to support his son in the medical care that he needs. And to paint that as someone who's trying to make a quick buck and that it's disgusting and disheartening and all of this kind of jazz. And no good deed goes unpunished. That's BS. You know what, folks? I am going to be so happy, for one, if we can finally turn the page on this, this, this page on Donald Trump, and you know what that page says on it, the end. I am so happy that we stand one of the best chances that we've ever had of once again defeating Donald Trump. Till next time.